Well, praise the Lord. It is such a beautiful evening tonight. We are coming to you live from Potash Ridge. As snow is fall, is fall, has fell on the ground. We got about three inches up here. Ice and everywhere. The temperature outside is about 23 degrees. And, but I'm going to tell you, God is still in control of everything and every situation. No matter how dim or bleak it may look, He's still in control and we can still put our trust and our hope in Him. It's so good to be able to come to you in your home and have these little Bible studies and I pray that there'll be a little blessing to you uh, and pray for us that God will help us in this as we continue to feel led of Him and follow His leading and direction. If you have your Bibles tonight, would love to read with us. We're reading out of the book of Exodus, chapter 4, starting with verse 2. The scripture said, And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. Moses fled from before him. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. I'm going to ask you tonight, what is in your hand? What is this in your hand that you may thank God cannot use? You know, we, we know the story of Moses, how he was called, and uh, he had been in Egypt. He had fled from Egypt after becoming familiar with the Israelites and after <clears throat> killing a fil uh, an Egyptian because he was uh, because he was smart in the Hebrew. We know the story of how Moses went to the backside of the desert for 40 years and how there he was progressed and learned and everything. And sometimes God has to put us in the wilderness to get our attention and to teach us and go through a tough time of training. But here we come to the point where in Exodus 3 we see that Moses has been tending to sheep, he is a shepherd, all this God is a shepherd's rod in his hand. He has come to the to, in, into Mount Sinai area, Mount Horeb, and there he, he looks around, he spots a bush that is falling, and yet the bush is not consumed. He draws a little closer and hears the voice of God saying, Moses, take off your shoes for the ground you're standing on this holy ground. And Moses begins to call, God begins to call Moses to go back to his children of Israel and to bring them out by God's mighty strong hand. Moses is making all kinds of excuses and here in this passage we read, God asked Moses a simple question, what is in your hand? What have you got in your hand? You know, today we look around us and all Moses has is a shepherd's rod. You know, in my, what, what can I do with a shepherd's rod? Just got a few sheep around and everything. What can a little old stick do? What can a little old nothing, insignificant do? And I imagine Moses felt that way when he asked, but yet that rod, it was just a, a shepherd's rod, became known as the rod of God. God was able to take that rod and use it for his glory and honor. God is not looking for abilities. He is looking for availability. He's not looking to see what kind of uh, abilities we have to use us or not to use us. And, you know, too often we get our eyes on, well, no, God can't really use me. He can't use the situation I'm in or anything, but God is looking for men and women who have made themselves available for him to use. He's looking for people that would let him use them. He wants to take the thing that seems so insignificant. He wants to take the thing that you think is not important at all. And he wants to use it for his glory and his honor. And he can use it for his glory and his honor if we would only be willing to give it to him, to surrender it to him. What do you have in your hand? 
that you're holding on to? What do you have in your hand that you think is insignificant? Let's look at three examples here <clears throat> in Scripture real quick. We all know the story of David in 1 Samuel 17, of David and, and Goliath. We know how David was a shepherd boy. He was watching his flock. His three brothers, according to 1 Samuel 17, and went to war. The, the Hebrews were fighting a war against the Philistines. And we know how in that war they had been going for 40 days and that there was, there, there was a champion of the Philistines named Goliath who was a giant, nine to ten feet tall. Could you imagine someone as tall as that? Who was coming out and he, he challenged the Hebrews and said, let one of you come and fight me. And if you beat me, then the Philistines will beat your servants. And if I beat your champion, then we'll be your servants. And we know that this has been going on and on. <coughs> Excuse me. We know this has been going on for some time. And David had come on this scene just though David's father had sent David to check on his brothers. And he had come and he had to check on them and to bring them food and victuals. And he had come on this scene about the time the giant came out and he was, he was upset because this Philistine dared defy the God of Israel. And he was short, you know, the Bible, we, we believe David was a youth, probably 14, 16 years old. All he had was a slingshot, and he stopped at the brook and got five stones. His brothers derailed him and said, what can you do? You know, you just come out to see him, I find you. You know you can't do nothing, you're insignificant, you're not important. Saul so asked him, said, what can you do? What, how are you able to do it? But David kept saying, the Lord God will give me the victory over this uncircumcised Philistine. The Lord God will give me the victory over him. And he come out into the valley and the, fill, and the story goes that the giant, Goliath, come toward him and he began to derail him and begin to belittle him. I began to speak all kinds of words of discouragement against him, but David did not listen to it. David said, you come against me with sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. And with only a slingshot and a stone, God was able to make a mighty giant fall because of the God, God guided that stone right to its mark, and that giant fell. Friend, God can take the things that we think is so insignificant, the thing that we think is so small that God cannot use, and He can use it for victory to bring about victory in our lives if we would allow Him to do so. Let's look at another example. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, we know the woman with the pot of oil. She had come to Elisha. She had said, My husband is dead. And you know that your servant served God, loved God. He was the son of, the, of a prophet. And she had asked Elisha for help. Elisha said, What have you got in your house? He said, I've got nothing but a pot of oil. And Elisha told us that you go and borrow a vessel from all your neighbors to break it home, go into your house, shut you and your children in that house by yourself, and begin to fill those pots up. And she began to pour out that pot into the mother pots, and the oil just kept pouring and pouring and pouring until all the pots were full. Then she was able to go to Elijah and tell him, and he told her to go and sell that which she had and to, for her and her children to live off the west. Who would have ever thought that God could use just a little part of a woman? Who would have ever thought that God, been, and it may have seemed so insignificant, just this little part of a woman is all I have, nothing. It's, it's nothing. It's worthless. It surely won't pay the creditors who want to take my kids away. But yet God took it, that which was more applied to him, 
which, which was given to him, and he multiplied it for his use and his glory and his honor. Let's look at another story out of the book of, uh, out of the New Testament. In the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14, the feeling of the 5,000. Jesus had been teaching in the desert place. At the evening time it had approached, the disciples had come to Jesus. Said, send the people in the way, we don't have no food for them, they're hungry. Jesus asked how would they may find them, they like, give them food. They asked how can we give, and they brought this boy to Jesus. We don't know the name of the boy, but all he had was five loaves and two little fishes. And he gave them to the Lord. No, if we would just give all that we have, God can take it and use it. Five loaves of bread, two little fishes. The scripture says there were 5,000 men besides women and children. There were probably 20, at least 20 to 25,000 people in that crowd to that day. And yet, just five loaves, two little fishes, a basket full of food. How in the world could that feed five thousand? I mean, really, it, 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 truthfully, that anybody can't even feed one grown person. Some of us, it wouldn't, it wouldn't even stop to satisfy us, huh? <laughs> Five fish, five loaves and two fishes. And yet, when the master took it, oh my. <laughs> that which God, which man may count as insignificant. That which man may say is not important. I imagine the disciples looked at that and said, that, You can't do nothing with that. You know, some may have even laughed. But God took it, Jesus took it, and he began, and he blessed it, and he began to break it, and pass it out. And he continued to break it, and continued to break it, until it had fed over 5,000 men, besides women and children. It has fed over 20 to 25,000 people, with just five little loaves and two little fish. If we could ever just grasp that God will take care of every need that we have. But we must realize and understand that the thing, and the point I'm trying to make is this, the thing that we think is so insignificant, not important, whatsoever, yet God can take and use it for his glory. You may be saying, preacher, I'm not called to preach. I'm not called to get behind a pulpit and do to to other teach. But let me tell you something, we're all called to minister. All minister means is to serve. And in whatever capacity God has put you, you can serve. What is in your hand? Maybe in your hand is a hammer with nails, your carpenter by trade, you can use that to build and to, to, to build things and to make cabinets and stuff. And as you do so, you can pray all them things that God will bless and touch. Maybe you've been put into a position as a teacher don't, and you feel like you can't really do nothing as a teacher in a school or something or something. But yet, if you would just begin to look for opportunities, as you would just begin to pray, you could pray all the test papers that you're grading them and stuff like that. As you can pray for your students, call them out by name, not in the school room I'm talking about, but at home if you would just take the time to do so. Maybe you might be in a profession as a lawyer or a judge. It, it, or a police officer, we can serve God wherever we're at with what's in our hand. Maybe you are vital. God has put a pen in your hand. You can write for his glory and your honor. Maybe you're a musician. You can sing for 
his glory and your honor. Take that which God has used uh, and given, uh, given uh, the ability that he's given you and use it for his glory uh, and his honor. Don't think for one minute uh, that that thing that you have uh, is insignificant and God cannot use it uh, in any way, shape or form. Colossians chapter 3 verse 24 said, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that the Lord, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Jesus. Whatever we do, whatever we say in word and deed, we should do all these things to the glory and to the honor of God. We need to give Him our all. We may think it is so insignificant, but God can take that as I said while ago. God is not looking for, avail uh, uh, looking for ability. He's looking for availability. If we would just dare to give Him our all and let him use us. Set forth Peter chapter 4 verse 10 and 11. As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another. Every man has received a gift. You may not think that you're gifted, but you are. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl has received a gift from God. And how we use that gift is up to us. We ought to use it for the glory and the honor of God. But God has given each and every individual a gift. If we could ever just grasp that and know that, As every man who received a gift, even so, even so minister, the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the abilities which God giveth him, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God is there, has given you and I a gift that we can use. So, preacher, he can't use me, yes, he can. He can use it. Listen to me. If God can use me for his glory and honor, I can't even say straight. I constantly have to turn my head to even try to see things. I can't even hear that good have to wear two very powerful human names. I got a speech impediment. I cannot get anywhere unless I have someone to drive. But if God can take me and use me, friend, he'll be he is able to take you and use you. Because my Bible says God has no respect to a person. What he's done for one, he'll do for another. If we could ever just grasp that, dare to let God use that that you have in your hand. Don't ever buy into the lie of the enemy. That what you have is insignificant. You are significant in the eyes of God. You were fearfully and wonderfully created. In whatever he has given you a gift to do. You may not be able to get out and do much, but you can praise him. Facebook has been a wonderful modem. And if we were there, oh my friend, if we were there to begin to fill Facebook with with, with wonderful testimonies of God and all that he is doing instead of a lot of the trash that is going through it today oh how things would change because we never know who might be reading or who might be listening we have so much that is available to us oh we can make all kinds of excuses 
why we can't do something, why we can't accomplish something. We got all kinds of excuses, and the devil would give them to us if we can't take them. But if we would take them, be willing to take the gift that which is in our hand and use it for the glory of God, God will take it and use it for His power and His might. Dare to believe God. Dare to let Him use it, even in the most mundane thing that you're doing. Dare to just let Him do it. If it's pumping gas, pump gas and pray all those that you're pumping the gas for. There are ways that we can find the minister. If God, if we would allow God to use us, and God will use us, because when we can make a difference in someone's life, don't let the enemy dare. I say dare to let God take that which is in your hand, and no matter how insignificant it may be. No matter how insignificant you may think it is, dare to take that that is in your hand and give it to God wholeheartedly for His glory and His honor. I often wonder when Moses threw that, had that problem, and the Lord asked him, What's in your hand? I said, Oh, Lord, Lord, there's no stitch up to that. I often wonder if every time he looked at that, if we remember that conversation he had with the Lord way back then. If we would just be willing to dare to let God use us, no matter what. Father, I thank you for my friends right now. Father, there are those that may be listening to this that think they're insignificant. They may think that, Lord, you can't use them for whatever reason, maybe because they've messed up in their life, maybe because they've sinned somewhere, and even though they've repented, they feel like they are disqualified now, or maybe for whatever reason they feel insignificant, maybe because by what others have said to them, and Lord, they just feel like no one would even care and listen to them. But Father, let them know that, that you can take that that they have in their hands and use it. For your glory, your honor. If we would only be willing to dare to believe and stand upon your word. If we would only be willing to believe that there is nothing impossible for you. But you are looking for men and women who are willing to make themselves available. That you might use for thy glory and thy honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me get a drink of water real quick. I know that before I quit, I, 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 I know there's a lot of sickness going around. There's cancers. I, I, I've got friends on Facebook that has cancer, flu, everything that's going on. All around. <clears throat> Some places of business are actually on lockdown because of the sickness and all of these things. I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. If there's ever been a time that we need God to move in healing, it's today. So I've been reminded today that there are many that we, we've almost got to a place with scoff at healing. And, 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 and it's, it's largely the devil has blinded people and made them to believe that God's not in the healing business anymore. And I, I don't, you know, I don't know why God sometimes chooses not to heal. That's not my prerogative. That's not for me to answer. But I still believe in healing. If you believe that, why have you got your disabilities? I don't know. God's got his reasons. God's got his purpose. But I still believe. 
I still believe. Don't look at this body with these disabilities and let it for one moment make you think God does not heal. God still heals. He still heals and he still answers prayer. Yes, there have been some scam artists out there, but don't let that discourage you. God still moves when his children pray. James 5.16 says, For the effectual prayer of a righteous man developed much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man developed much. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, I believe verse 6, uh, it says that he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes uh, ye were healed. Uh, friend, we have a promise of healing today. If we were there to believe, uh, Jesus said, uh, if we would ask anything in his name, believing that we would receive, Receive. We would have what tool he said, what tool we ask, and if we would ask it according to his will, according to First John chapter 5, 14 and 15, if we have this confidence that we ask anything according to his will, he heals us, and if we know that he heals us, we have the petition that we desire of him. I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. Just a minute. But I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you if you have prayer requests, prayer needs, I will just send them to my message uh, 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 in my inbox at message at the top of the page. You should be uh, inbox me. Send your prayer request. I'm going to pray you. I'm going to believe God for some miracles. I, I believe God is moving right now. But I'm going to believe God right now to reach out and touch. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word, which is true, your promises, which are yea and amen. Father, I ask now, O oh Lord Jesus, stretch forth your hand to heal, to perform signs and wonders. Father, I come against cancer in the name of Jesus. I cross it. In Jesus' name, that it dry up, that it be removed from the bodies. I come against this flu epidemic in Jesus' name. Those that are being affected by this flu. Father, I ask you to God, you would drive that virus from their body. Lord, that they will begin to receive that healing right now. Father, for those that are sick in body that we don't know what the problem is, Father, you know the exact problem. Stretch forth your hand, O Master. Heal, deliver, set free. For, Father, your word is still true and your promises are still the same. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. What you've done back then, you're still able to do today. Now, Father, by faith, I reach my hands out, and I ask you, Master, touch in Jesus' mighty name. Father, let healing begin to flow by your power and by your word. Father, that people will be recovered. God, that healing will take place. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Word said, if we, 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 we ask, believe that we receive. By faith, just begin to receive it right now. In Jesus' name. Just begin to just raise your hands and just receive it. Just say, Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. I receive it in Jesus' name. I plead the stripes in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, may God richly bless you. Here's our prayer. If we can pray for you, send me your prayer requests. I believe God still heals, delivers, and moves. And I challenge you, 
whatever you have in your hand, let him use it for his glory and his honor. May God richly bless you is our prayer.